Leah. You become Leah, the side chick of Rachel. And when Jacob just wanted to get a jump off, he Leah. The Bible said Leah was cock at it, didn't look good to Rachel. So did the Bible. She was cock at it, didn't look very good, but she must have had a nice body because Jacob jumped off, had sons by Leah. And she had to be content in life to be the sad chick. And some of y'all, because y'all watching this scandal and all these shows where they getting it in y'all head, that just be some sad chick. Man, you ought to have more esteem. I'd rather be celibate. I'd rather be celibate. If I can't have you all, I don't want you at all. I'd rather be celibate. Ooh wee. Oh, this is resurrection for you. This is your resurrection Sunday. Get up off your back. Resurrect. <laughs> resurrect. Stand up. Resurrect. <laughs> I train my daughters. No, sir. You ain't going to be no sad chick. No, sir. No, sir. Because I have to kill this Negro. No, sir. Have my daughter out there twisting up. Have putting babies in her and you ain't no sir. You either gonna want her or you're not gonna want her. You're not gonna play those games. You young girls, hold yourself. Hold out. Hold out. You hot right now, it'll go away. Them little Negroes just they just they just smelling like a dog. They know you, they know you hot. Just just keep holding yourself out. Because as you get older, you'll have more opportunities. All those girls that want to be the side chick. And want to hurry up and get their little sex on. You'll see them at 17, 18, 19. Watch how they be. They have a, 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 they have a tribe and no chief. Amen. Tribe and no chief. And you will have virtue. And, you, and men, men are drawn to your value. They'll value you. They'll honor you. Say amen. 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 Let me, I don't even know how to close. I'm going to close this. What I say? I was talking, talking about the name. <laughs> But when I talk, it's like I talk like a father because it's so uh, we so void of father wisdom. We don't have wisdom. Yeah. I'm done. I'm gonna close right here. Verse uh, uh, 16. For where image strife is, there confusion every evil word. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, it's gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Your life has value. Your life is valuable, especially uh, to Jesus. The problem is that you don't know who you are and what you have to offer. And when we don't know that, we will allow anything and anybody to use us and abuse us because we don't know our worth and value one of the reasons why Satan messes with you as a little child and starts giving you complex and hang ups and have people talking about your problems your size your eyes your body your hips your weight whatever it is that you know you know some flaw that you feel about the devil will find that flaw he'll use people to keep pinpointing it because he's trying to get a complex in you to make you lit focus on your flaws and not on your gifts and talents, not on what he blessed you with. And that's why most of the women spend all their life trying to be beautiful because they, they, was, they was talked about. Or they, and so they, 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 can't, they can't let their fronts down. So they never developed the true them, the real gifts and talents, because they were too busy trying to be who they thought people wanted them to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is at earthly sensual wisdom, where you keep living your life trying to please others and never find out who you are. It starts with knowing Jesus. That's your first start. Your first step is to know Christ. Amen. It's to, it's to give him your life and then allow him to show you who you are, what you are, what you have. Your first step is to step to Christ. Then after that, everything else will begin to fall in place as you begin to seek him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I speak to your heart and your esteem this morning. Not just women, but men too. I mean, we, we, we men are, have... Just more low self-esteem than women. That's why we always front and sticking our chest out. Got back cars to cover it, and jewelry to cover it. All this stuff we using it to cover our, our insufficiency or our inadequacies. 
That's why you see all our young men out in the street. As soon as they get some money, they got to get something to show, to show, to flash, to show. Because they're so insecure about who they are. They don't know, they don't like themselves. So they got to become somebody else. Get 20 gold teeth in their mouth, trying to change their appearance, tattooing their face up, doing all kinds of things to change who they are because they don't like themselves. And the first thing you need to do is begin to understand that you got to stop building up a false person and build up the real person. Stand on your feet. God is concerned about you this morning. It wasn't just coming here because it's Easter. He's concerned about you this morning. He wants your life to become productive. But first you must say, I must value. Come on, say, I must value my life. You must value your life. Value what God has given you, no matter what it looks like. God doesn't judge by the outer appearances. That's what men do. God don't. Don't focus. Man, some of y'all could, some of some of y'all are probably great writers, but you so busy focused on your looks and trying to fit in that you can't even develop that. Some of y'all have skills and talents and abilities you cannot develop because the only one, the only ability or talent that seems worthy is how you look. Because you're trying to cover a complex. If you don't like somebody yourself, I understand. If you overweight, if you want to lose weight, lose weight. If you don't lose weight, okay. But don't live the rest of your life robbing yourself of your inner gifts and talents. Because we will try to make our, we will end up making our inadequacies our vision for life. Oh, I don't know if y'all caught what I said. And we will compensate all our life for our inadequacies. Instead of saying, you know what? However my hair is, it's the way it is. Amen. You, know, when, you know, when I was 27, my hair started thinning. I was upset. I was like, man, I had nice hair. All my life had nice hair. I said, man, what's going on here? Man, I'm upset about that. I mean, it took me all but, 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 but two days. That's how, that's how long I grieved. I'm like, I ain't know, two days. I said, you may save this off. <laughs> Whatever my head, well, may save this off. I don't care. Save it off and went on. Amen. Wasn't going to grieve over that. Amen. I said, I got her on my face. Amen. Let's grow that out. <laughs> Let's focus on what I got. <laughs> got time to worry about what I ain't got. Amen. Man, what do I got? Amen. Let's just focus on what I got. Amen. I can make this look as nice as I can and, 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 and move on. I said, my, my, my talents and abilities are developed so a person don't know this stuff about a person that's gifted, that's walking in their talent and ability. I ain't got time to worry about having no complex over that. Well, God endowed me with he did, what he didn't, he didn't. But what I don't got, fine. I'll move on to what I do got. But I'm not going to spend the rest of my life. I'll be seeing these preachers with, with black men with wig, rugs on, wigs on. <laughs> Two pays. I'm like, man, just let it go. Just let it go. Once your hairline goes so far, just leave it alone. It's, just, it's gone. Join the join the, join us. <laughs> it's over. Join us. Let's just get it over with. The sooner you do it, the sooner you get over the, 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 the self-conscious and you gone on. I left it alone. Didn't care about it. Now, now if all I had was, was if all I had was my looks, I would be hurt. I would be suffering and struggling. Why? Because that's all I have. But because I've developed my gifts and my talents, my abilities. Anybody, if you know me, you know I've developed most of the stuff I have. Preaching, music, carpentry, revelation, anything. I've developed what I got. Therefore, I ain't sitting up grieving over what is inevitable. I know it's going it's no, to lose it. Some of y'all women are so miserable because all you had was your beauty. And you ain't developed nothing else. So when that goes, what do you got? But God puts skills and talents and abilities on the inside of you that you haven't developed. Because you're only developing what people think is important. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is the reason why the black church is full of potential with no successes. Black church full of potential. I'll be, I'll, I, I, when I look at these 
go to choirs and look at these people that sang in. You don't know their name. You don't know who they are. And this sang are beautiful voices, but have no ability to see what they got. They don't know what they got. They still waiting on somebody to tell them. And you know, somebody like me said, boy, if I had that voice, man, I wouldn't be no pastor. Man, I'd be somewhere in there where I'd be at. Because I know, how, I know to, to develop what you got. Amen. That's what keeps you out of jealousy. Amen. So I, you ain't going to be jealous of somebody when you develop what you got. Amen. I mean, your problem is you keep looking at Beyonce and all these little small chicks Amen. running around her as an object of beauty. And you hear Beyonce talk sound like she's straight from over there. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. But she developed, well, she developed her body. That's what she developed. But, but she developed whatever little voice she got, she worked with it and made it out of something. I'm not, a, I'm not agreeing with her. All of that's foolishness to me. Because it's, it's really making black girls self-conscious. She's just like the black Barbie. Like the white girls had that Barbie and made them self-conscious of themselves. That's what they use and other do. And black girls don't even feel beautiful. Used to be all colors of black women felt beautiful. Now we got to be light dying their skin, lightening their skin up. Everybody got to have long hair and all this. What, 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 what happened to us? One thing I want to tell you is, is, is men are drawn by inequalities. Study the Proverbs 31 woman. She had inequalities. Well, not even knowing about beauty, she had inequalities. And when you develop those, that's what keeps a man. That's what keeps a man. And it's funny how we're getting so beautiful to get one. But we can't keep them because we haven't been, we ain't built up the inner, the inner strength to keep a man. But we can catch a man, and you got you flattered by that. Because a man look at your butt. It's there. If you put it out there, he's gonna look at it. That don't mean he wants you. You're using the wrong thing to have long-lasting love. <laughs> if you want to keep a man, hide your butt. You want to get a good man, hide your butt and work on your conversation. Work on your attitude. But if you just want to catch a man, all by all means. It don't mean a man ain't gonna look. It don't mean a man ain't gonna want it. It. Not necessarily you, but it. Anyway. This is a good word for resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Build yourself. Build your esteem. Amen. You do it in the word. Who does God say you are? Amen. Build your esteem. Amen. One of the worst things is to be grown and still battling superficial. I'm worried about what they say about me. Man, that's the most. Man, that's foolishness. Amen. I mean, that's, that's, that's a real. That's bondage within itself. I always worry about what somebody think about you. Bondage. I'd rather be free. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to pray today. Some of you are the Lord is touching your heart because you may be one of the type of people who have your image based on worldly or sensual wisdom or even devilish wisdom. You don't see what God sees about you. I would, I would tell you that you need to see Jesus more clearer. The Bible says he is our mirror. When we see him, we see what we truly look like. So when you look into that perfect law of liberty, that's how we begin to see ourselves. Without, without having Christ, you'll only know what people say about you. You'll only see what they say. But when Jesus is really your mirror, you'll begin to see who you truly are and start to develop that. And it's a bad thing to get up in age and not know. And all you know is what voices people have said but you don't know who you are let's change it today bow your heads let's grab somebody's hand today grab a hand wherever you are grab somebody's hand bow your heads
Hallelujah. I know we came because maybe some of y'all came because of Easter, whatever. But this is the perfect time to meet this great God that we serve. Jesus is the most awesome. The most awesome. Makes your life make sense. Stuff that don't make sense. And even if, he don't, if it don't make sense, he gives you power to go through it. Come out on the other side of it with victory. So today I want to I want to give you an invitation to know this great God. If you say, Pastor Steve, I don't even know if I'm right with God. I don't know if I understand who I am. And I need Jesus to show me who I am so that I don't live the rest of my life in what people say. If you can say that, and I just I just want to know. I just want to see myself for real. If you want Jesus to be that mirror in your life. I want you to squeeze the hand you're holding right now. Squeeze that hand. Squeeze that hand. Now, if somebody, if somebody will squeeze your hand, I want you to raise that hand. If they, if they squeeze your hand, raise it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to let, let the Lord use you. Do one more thing for me. One more thing. If somebody squares your hand, I want you to just grab their hand and bring them down to the altar. Come with them. Come with them. Come with them so we can pray. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Everybody here. Everybody at the altar. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift, lift your hands. Hallelujah. We're going to pray a prayer. Bow your heads. Focus on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now is the time where God is going to change the image of yourself. Show you who you are. Show you who you are in Him. So you never have to worry about what people say. And to be secure that you are saved. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you now. I ask you to forgive me of all sin. The ones I know about and the ones I don't. Forgive me for chasing a false image. For building a false me. Forgive me for putting others and things before you I ask you now come into my heart wash my sins away cleanse me wash me take away my low self esteem take away my rejection take away my low self worth take away my inadequacy and my fears right now I give you my life I ask you mold it mold it Mold it, form it, change me into who you want me to be. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, give the Lord praise.